Welcome back, Arbor League, and today is the last day of the season of Timeless Travels, and we are starting the World of Wonders, or as I like to call it, the World of Waters. So if you're wondering what the wonders are, like and subscribe and turn notifications on, and let's see what Niantic has in store for us. Literally, probably more of these ticketed events. So today is going to be more of a relaxed day, kind of no script. We're just going to quickly go over all of the the things going on in this season and what there is to look for. So first off, we get to meet the Poison Pin Pokemon Poipole, I guess because he's Poipole and he's from New York. An Ultra Beast, he's going to be in the raids, in the wormholes, so raid locked. The Ultra Beast, Poipole, codename UB Adhesive, which has come from a distant place to our world. So an Ultra Beast coming to Pokemon Go. For Pokemon debuts, we have this thruple here. We're celebrating the release of Pokemon Horizons, the series. It's going to be a new show, I guess, that's on Netflix. It's going to be featuring these Pokemon and Pikachu with the captain hat. So to start off, we have the debut of Charcadet, Armor Rouge, and Cerulege. We also have Pikachu wearing Cap's hat, where it could also encounter a shiny Pikachu. The arrow indicating here that we can evolve Charcadet by battling Pokemon while Charcadet is your buddy. It can evolve into Armor Rouge after you defeat 30 Psychic or Ghost Pokemon. So very similar to Annihilate, but you do not have to defeat these Pokemon with Charcadet. For eggs, Charcadet will be hatching in the 10k, so it is egg locked. Kind of unfortunate as these eggs take a while to hatch, and if it hatches, it might not even be Charcadet. So kind of an uncommon Pokemon to obtain. On the bright side, the event bonuses, we have double XP for hatching. Team Go Rocket Balloons will also appear more frequently. This is not a rocket event, just more balloons appearing. You also have surprise encounters, also featuring Pokemon from Horizons this series. When you take a snapshot instead of Smurgle, it will be one of these Pokemon. For the featured attack, we get Bolt Tackle, which is a charged attack. 90 power and decreases defense by one stage. Basically a wild charge clone that just does less damage. Taking a look at this graphic here, it does 90 damage for 33 energy. So we're going to hop over to PV Poke and take a look at moves. Just need to find a charged attack that does 90 damage. We're going to sort this out here by damage. So scrolling down here, the closest moves that we see that can compare to are like Avalanche, Dragon Pulse, Dynamic Punch, Earth Power, Energy Ball, Flamethrower, Flying Press, Fusion Bolt, Fusion Flare, etc. down the list there. But it decreases your defense by one stage, so basically going to be Wild Charge that does less damage. So scrolling down here to Wild Charge that does 100 for 45 and it lowers your defense by two stages. It does more damage. Costs about the same energy, a little bit more, but it's just gonna be a worse wild charge. For the one star raids, Pikachu wearing Cap's hat again, really pushing that one out. Rhyhorn and Rockruff, we get to raid for a little bit instead of just the eggs. Then for three star raids, we have Chansey, Noctowl, and Metagross. Now, Chansey just has the star beside it, indicating that it could be shiny. Noctowl and Metagross could be shiny as well, but I don't know if the shinies are available in raids. That wouldn't make any sense to me, so gotta keep an eye out for that one. For the field research, Task encounters, we will get Pikachu wearing Caps hat again, Gold Duck, Skarmory, Rockruff, Spirigatito, Fuicoco, and Quaxley. Then for the showcases, I know some of you are into that. I like to do them every once in a while. It is free rewards. So there are no Pokemon designated as of yet. So we will be on the lookout for announcements as to which ones are. For wild encounters, we have Scyther, Nosepass, Sprigatito, Fuecoco, Quaxley, and Pommy. We also have Pikachu wearing Caps Hat, Alolan Grimer, and Beldum. These could be shiny if you are lucky. So for these Pokemon, I think Scyther is alright to pick up. Skizzer is a pretty decent Pokemon in Great League and Ultra League. Kind of glassy, but pick up those Scyther candies and get that Skizzer. Nose Pass is also a good one to get as Probopass is 
basically a Walmart Bastidon, but he's still decent in Great League, so good to pick up some nose pass candy. The other one's probably Fue Coco. Get that Skeledurge because he's pretty good for all three leagues, Great Ultra and Master. Sprigatito, obviously I'm happy about because of the grass. Pokemon Go web store event bundles, of course. Really trying to get you to buy stuff still, but for $14.99, we can get three remote raid passes, 10 premium battle passes, and 10 incubators. So not too bad of a box. So we can check that out at the Pokemon Go web store between March 1st and March 11th. And as for Shadow Pokemon debuts, we had received some in the last season. However, we are getting more. Again, no announcements on what they are, but one and three star Shadow Raids will be available and we will be getting the dogs again. Raikou, Entei, and Suicune in Shadow form at Shadow Raids at gyms will be available. And we have the Wonder Ticket, 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 still again, <laughs> like I said, I called it. But at the start of the World of Wonders, we will be able to purchase a three-part ticketed experience that includes encounters, new avatar items, and timed research. And the community days have been announced. No Pokemon designated as of yet, but March 16th, we will get a community day. April 7th will be the community day classic, so another starter or rerun Pokemon that we have already seen in the past. April 20th and May 19th are set for now and we have some themed stickers here i know clefairy and jigglypuff are not showing up luckily i think the computer knows who is on it and as some of my friends know i do like to put on the grass stickers on some of my gifts send some arbor themed gifts with some arbor themed stickers so we got cutie fly vespa queen Sawaddle, and oddish and for the main event and why we're all here reading this news go battle league we have a world of wonders update so to begin, and before we begin, we must end, and to reiterate, as everyone else has reiterated, you got to start piece before the end of season rewards, as your rewards could be in the hundreds of thousands of dust, and if you start piece, it will be double that. So end of season rewards will be available on the battle screen, your Go Battle League will reset, and rank up requirements will remain the same as the prior season. And we have a schedule for what cups are coming to Go Battle League. So March 1st, March 8th, to kick off the season, we have Great League and Electric Cup. And we all know Electric Cup being the Emoga, Zapdos, Magnet Boys kind of rock, paper, scissors cup kind of meh. But from March 8th to March 15th, we have Ultra League and the Spring Cup Great League Edition. These cups will be described later on down the line. Then we have March 15th to March 22nd, the Master League and the Spring Cup Great League Edition. Four times Stardust win rewards. And following that, from the 22nd to the 29th, all three leagues with four times Stardust as well. So make sure you Stardust up for that, as the higher ranks deal out more Stardust, and we get four times Stardust plus your Star Piece will double that as well. And you'll notice a trend here midway through the month is kind of where they start doing that. So as we see to kick off April from the 29th of March to April 5th, we have Great League and Ultra Premier. This is what I like is that the Premier Cups are coming back. There are no Legendaries, Ultra Beasts, or Mythicals. So none of those bulky Pokemon like Defense Deoxys, Cresselia, Giratina in Ultra League as it is about 95% of the meta. Then from April 25th to April 12th, we have Ultra League again with Jungle Cup Great League Edition. So we all played Jungle Cup in the Little Cup, so it'll be similar rules except 1500 CP. So from April 12th is where we get the four times Stardust again midway through the month. April 12th to April 19th, Master League and Jungle Cup Great League will be available for four times Stardust win rewards. Then from April 19th to 26th, again, all three leagues with four times Stardust. Then to kick off May from April 26th to the 3rd, we get Great League and Master Premier. Again, another cup with no legendaries, mythicals, or ultra beasts. Which is about 75-95% to 95 of the Master League as well. So, this will be testing your knowledge and skills. And we will see what Pokemon people have maxed out that are not legendary. So, from May 3rd to May 10th, we get the Ultra League and the Great League Remix again, which is the top 20 band. Then from the 10th to the 17th, we get Master League with Great League Remix again, but only four times Stardust win rewards from Great League Remix. Again, it's not noted that it's on Master League, but again, we will keep an eye out for that as well. Then from May 27th from May 24th, 
my quote unquote favorite cups that I absolutely hate. Any kind of little or catch cup we have catch cup, little edition and catch cup, great league edition. But knowing this ahead of time, maybe we can prepare better for this. We also have four times Stardust win rewards for that. So that is absolutely necessary in investing it if you want to get those dust rewards. Then again, to the end of the month of May, we have all three leagues with four times Stardust win rewards again. So the first cup we have is the Electric Cup. And these are the bands down here. So we have Unovan Stunfisk, Heliolisk, Chargebug, and Bicavolt. The reason, obvious reason, that Unova Stunfisk is banned because he is ground and electric type, meaning he triple resists electric type, so that's an obvious ban. Heliolisk actually has access to Bulldoze, so we have a theme here. Any kind of electric Pokemon that has any ground connection is a ban. Chargebug doesn't have access to any ground moves, but he is kind of bulky, so... I guess sort of in a remix kind of way, he is banned. And we have Vicavolt that has access to Mud Slap. Scrolling on down, we have the Spring Cup Great League Edition. Only Water, Grass, and Fairy Pokemon are eligible. The bands will be Mantine and Toxapex. So we can kind of see why with this cup. I think this cup might be a Grass dominated, maybe a Water Ice, because these waters do have part Ice types. But seeing grass here, that could be part poison, can deal with the fairies as well. So grass is looking pretty strong for this cup. We can see why Mantine is banned. It does have access to wing attack and ice beam. So that would be an unfair advantage for grass. And we have Toxapex, which is a counter for a lot of fairies and grass as well. So Pokemon that are top core breakers, we can see why they are banned. Although we still have access to Gyarados and Pelipper. So we still have Flyer options. And as for Toxapex, we still have Tentacruel available. So we still have Poison options as well. And one of my favorite cups, and I think is going to be interesting this time, we do have Ultra Premier, which is no Legendary, Mythical, or Ultra Beasts. And for the Jungle Cup, we have only Normal, Grass, Electric, Poison, Ground, Flying, Bug, and Dark types are eligible for this cup. Lots of options to pick from, so not as condensed a meta as, say, the Electric Cup. So lots of variety to pick from, yet still condensed. And for the bands, we have Gligar and Galarian Stunfisk. That's kind of easy to see. As for Stunfisk, we have Normal, Electric, Poison, Flying, a lot of things that it resists and can handle. So it's probably going to be overpowered. Same thing for Gligar. It's going to be good against all the poisons and all the grounds and all the bugs so again kind of an unfair advantage and easy to see why these are banned master premier is a another cup that i'm going to enjoy because no legendary mythical or ultra beast which about 95 percent is master league so no more kyogre groudon zation mewtwo none of that so it's, again like i was saying earlier it's going to be interesting to see who's maxed out a Pokemon to level 50 that isn't legendary, but it is possible. And if you did see my videos the other day, like the Swampert and Beedrill one, it is possible to win in the cup of your choice without legendaries, especially Master League. Like my Swampert one, I have a Venusaur video if you guys seen that as well. So there are Master League teams out there that do not require legendaries. Scrolling down to the Great League Remix, Usually with the Great League Remix, it's an auto-rect of what Niantic thinks that we use the most. But we're going to see here what this list looks like this year. It looks a little bit more reasonable because this is kind of the more meta that I would see in the tournaments or in Go Battle League from day to day. And it makes a lot more sense. So we've got Alolan Sand Slash. Then we have Wigglytuff. Probably a lot more use out of last season since it did get the Icy Wind buff. Or got buffed by receiving Icy Wind. Lickitung, pretty common pick. Lantern, Azumarill, Umbreon. Haven't seen too much a lot lately. But again, bulky Pokemon that a lot of people use apparently. We got Skarmory, again probably with the buff of Steel Wing. And Vigoroff with the buff of Rock Slide. Metacham, Whizcash with the buff of Scald. All of this makes sense. Altaria, Registeel, Defense Deoxys, Bastiodon, Galarian Stunfisk, Talonflame, Trevenant, 
and more up and comers. We have Chargerbug, Skeledurge, and Claude Sire. Some more bulky Pokemon, not including Skeledurge, but have seen a lot more use since the last season. And we have Catch Cup Little Edition and Catch Cup Great Edition. So now that we know that it is coming up, maybe we can prepare a little bit better. And maybe that was my case in a couple of Catch Cups before, is that you're not always paying attention to the Pokemon that you're catching, or you're just trying to get a good one so you don't actually have one for the Catch Cup. And more often than not, it's not worth powering up a crappy one for about a week. So we have Pokemon must be caught between March 1st and June 1st, so the entire season. Catch Cup is at near the beginning of this season, so at least we have a little bit of time to get Pokemon. So we will see what Niantic has to offer for that. And we have a new attack. We have Metal Sound as a fast attack. So we will take a look at this graphic here and we see the damage six. We have nine energy for six damage. And it looks like it's a pretty quick move. The duration is less than a second. So we're gonna hop over to PV Poke and find a similar fast attack that does six damage and gains nine energy. So scrolling down here to PV Poke, we see, I guess, Shadow Claw that is six damage and gets eight energy is as close as we can get. Might be similar to like a Spark or a Leafage. So it looks pretty decent. To compare it to a Steel move here, Bullet Punch does six damage and gets seven energy, but it's still a pretty good move. So we will take a look at what Pokemon Magnet Boys, we see Bronzong, but no Bronzor. So again, we'll have to keep an eye out for that. And we do see the correct version of Wormadam Trash and the Clink Clank Clink line. Next move on our list, we have Psy Wave. So taking a look at the graphic over here, we have four damage, gaining seven energy. Hopping back over to PV Poke here for fast moves. Looking for a 4 and a 7. So there's nothing really standing out to me. Maybe low kick that has a 4 and a 5. Because the next best option is like a bullet seed or a geomancy seed that does 5 and 13. Or 4 and 13. So that doesn't look too promising. You know, Dragon Breath is down there, but look at the rest of these moves like Pound, Scratch, Bite. Just doesn't look good. So Psy Wave, we are getting it on Mr. Mime, Miss Drevis, Lunatone, Solrock, Miss Magus, Inky, and Malamar. So again, nothing to write home about. It's a lot of Pokemon that people don't use anyways. For Malamar, you're still going to want to keep Psycho Cut as it's going to be better energy generation overall. And then we have another move, Sand Attack. So taking a look at the graphic here, we have Sand Attack that does 4 damage for 7 energy. So sort of the same as Psy Wave. We get Sand Shrew, Sand Slash, the Kanto versions. And we get Alolan Diglett, Alolan Dugtrio. Not the Kanto versions, just the Alolan versions that are part Steel. Zigzagoon, Lanone, Trapinch, Vibrava, Flygon line, the Cactus line, Cacnea and Cacturn, Starly, Staravian, Star Raptor. Of course, the birds are getting it. Hippopotas, Hippowden, Lillipup, Herdier, Stoutland, Furfru, and the Sandy Gas Palisand combo. Although Palisand, Flygon, Sand Slash, these guys already have Mudshot. So I think that's going to be better for energy generation as we saw that it might be another like low kick or kind of crappy move set. So probably going to want to keep mud shot on those Pokemon. And for the attack changes, nothing too earth shattering shadow bone. So the only Pokemon that's affected by that is the Alola Marowak. So it is getting an increase to 80 power, which so shadow bone will do a little bit more damage. Next we have brick break. So for this, the energy cost is increased and it's guaranteed to lower the opposing Pokemon's defense by one stage. So I'm assuming it might be like a Psychic Fangs clone. So hopping over to PV Poke, we're going to check out the moves in each league and see who has Brick Break. 
going over to the standings, and I think I'm only going to do Great League for this. I don't think any other Pokemon in Ultra League or Master League have Brick Break, and if they do, then you will see it in the Great League. So checking out Brick Break. Obviously, we know Vigoroth has had it and Hakamo. We also have Go Goat. So might start seeing an increase of that. If you're lucky to have one, I do not, unfortunately. Raichu, the Kanto one, is does have access to Brick Break. And obviously, all the fighters we see Passimian, Hitmonchan, Machoke, Phalanx, Galarian Farfetched, not Surfetched, but Galarian Farfetched. Hitmonchan, Furet, Hitmonlee Shadow, Hitmonlee, yes, of course, Furet, Hitmonlee, Magmortar, Girder, Machop, Gallet, Scraggy, Kangaskhan, Stuffle, Magby, Elekid, the Babies, etc., Mankey, Snubble, so probably more important in Little Cups where there is less bulk and less HP. Or in Cups that Vigoroth is prominent in as lowering the defense will cause your counters to do more hoping that you turn that match flip that match by lowering the opponent's defense body slam is the preferred move but maybe in like smaller metas where brick break is preferred it gets the defense drop now so hopefully that will shake up the meta we also have a buff to cross chop so we know all the pokemon that have that we will hop over to PV Poke and see who else. Take a look at who benefits from this. So the all-around loved Shadow Machamp, Obstagoon, we knew that. Machoke, Primeape, remember Gold Duck does have access to that as well. As does Barbarical and Teddy Ursa and Mankey. Again, probably more for Little Cup as we do have more basic Pokemon like Mankey and Teddy Ursa and Machop. Then a couple Spice Picks, but basically Machamp and Obstagoon and Primeape are getting that buff. And we are getting a buff to Aqua Tail. It's going from 50 to 55 power. So we're hopping over to PV Poke and we'll see who is benefiting from Aqua Tail. Again, why I like to call it the World of Waters. As we see Quagsire that just recently got a community day. PV Poke still recommends Mud Bomb Stone Edge, but maybe if Aqua Tail hits a little bit harder, it has an access to a better move than Water Pulse. And of course, we have our Dragonair, Dragalge, Hisuian Quillfish, Drapion, and Fracture. So Fracture, Fracture is getting a buff to its Aqua Tail. Maybe that might make it rise up a little bit, but we still have better options like Dragalge, Vaporeon, Relicanth that I don't have yet, Bruxish, Gyarados, Duat, Huntail, Basculin, Seal, Skrelp, Chinchino, and Minchino both have Aqua Tail in their movesets. Poplio, just Poplio and not Primarina, Skorupi, Goldeen, and Axu. And as some of you that have seen my graphic, I made a joke that Gastrodon was getting left in the dust when it came to water moves. But now Water Pulse is getting buffed as it's getting, as they are increasing the power from 70 to 80. I honestly think there are still better water move options. If you do have access to a better one, then that will be better than Water Pulse. And we are getting Pokemon with new moves. Gudra will now be able to learn the charged attack Aqua Tail, I think that will be a little bit better for it since Aqua Tail did get, will be getting a buff this season at the same time as Gudra receiving it. It was left with Bubble Beam before, which lowers your attack, but now that Aqua Tail hits a little bit harder, that will definitely be a better option on Gudra. Empoleon will now be able to learn the fast attack Steel Wing. So hopping over to PV, we're going to take a look at this, hopping over to PV Poke here. Taking a look at moves again. I still think we're going to want Waterfall on Empoleon as it deals higher damage. Taking a look at the two steel moves that Empoleon does have. He actually has access to Metal Claw. And if he's receiving Steel Wing, we're going to see if this is better. So we can see here that Metal Claw does 5 damage versus Steel Wing 7. But it does generate more energy than Metal Claw does. 
They're both two-turn fast moves. So this being said, Steel Wing is still going to be the better option. And we see for Alligator, we'll now be able to learn the fast attack Shadow Claw. So hopping over to PV Poke here, have a comparison between Shadow Claw and Waterfall. Obviously, Waterfall is the higher damaging move, but because it is a three-turn move and Shadow Claw does gains the same amount of energy but is a two-turn fast move, it gives it a higher rating. So Shadow Claw will be a buff to for Alligator and better for better energy gain. Gallade will now be able to learn the fast attack Psycho Cut. Up and back over here, we'll take a look at Psycho Cut and Confusion is the other move that Gallade had. So again, it's another sort of waterfall kind of comparison. Confusion is a higher damaging move. It does gain energy a little... It does gain more energy, but since it is a four-turn fast move and Psycho Cut is a two-turn fast move... It allows Gallade to gain energy quicker, giving it the higher rating. So we're probably going to want Psycho Cut on Gallade. So I'm saying buff for this one. Araquanid will now learn the charged attack Water Pulse. This is sort of a hit and miss with me because it is stuck with Bubble Beam, which lowers the attack, but it's bulky enough and it just needs better fast moves. It is stuck with Bug Bite and Infestation, which does allow it to gain energy quick. But again, Water Pulse, if there's another better option, then go with that. Then we see all the Throw Sock gets the Brick Break. So again, reminder that it does lower the defense by one stage. Crocodile also gets this. It kind of walls it against fairies, especially like Togekiss, it being ground. So if you have a Dark and Ground Pokemon with fighting moves that are not stab kind of walls it against fairy flyers. And then we see Crab Brawler also gets Brick Break and Crabominable, Hakamo, and its evolution Coma O, so not just Hakamo. So might see a rise in those. Again, especially in limited metas. Diglett and Dugtrio will be getting the fast attack mud shot before it used to be legacy and now it is not and is accessible to everyone allowing it to get to the moves that it has which are pretty decent it has like this typical standard ground moveset or rock slide earthquake but we were only stuck with mud slap now we have mud shot allowing for quicker energy gain graveler and golem also used to have it legacy now is available for everyone will also learn mud shot as well Again, I don't need to put up stats for this. We all know that Mudshot is a great move. It gains energy insanely, gains energy really quick, as opposed to the Mud Slaps and Rock Throws that these Pokemon do have. Starmie is getting the Charge Attack Psybeam. Psychic is still better for it, so that doesn't really help it. Curlia gets Draining Kiss. I mean, maybe for Evolution Cup, it's still not that great a... Pokemon, and again, Lilip, where it used to be Legacy, now has Bullet Seed for everyone as well, and Gastrodon getting Earthquake. Again, you're still going to want Earth Power on this. Earth Power gets a potential uh, defense drop, and since we don't have Mud Shot, we don't get to charge moves that quickly anyway, so Earth Power will still be the preferred move set for that. We have two more moves, Nature's Madness and Darkest Lariat. They will be charged attacks, but those are Committee Today moves. Darkest Lariat for Incineroar and Nature's Madness, which is the signature move of the Guardian Deities. So all the Tapus. There's not a lot of data on PV Poke about that yet, but when the time comes, we'll get that and see what those moves are about as well. And then again within Go Battle League, we have some events. So we have a Go Battle Weekend from May 4th to May 5th. It is four times Stardust win rewards, and the maximum sets will be increased from 5 to 20 for a total of 100 battles. We also have a free battle-themed timed research available. They include the avatar item Hala Style Shoes. And the Pokemon... And the 2024 Pokemon Europe International Championships are coming. And with that bonus, from April 3rd to April 7th, we get a little bit of a mini Go Battle Week. The maximum number of sets you can play per day will be increased from 5 to 10 for a total of 50 battles. So half as much, but still 
good to play for a lot of rewards and dust. So for the world of wonder rewards, for rank 1 we have Primeape, rank 6 we have Polyrath, then for Ace we have Dino, Veteran Gumi, Expert Jengmo O, and the legendary as usual Pikachu Libre. Standard encounters just for your standard encounters from rewards for your third battle in go winning your third battle in Go Battle League. We have Machop, Meryl, Gliger, <coughs> Grubbin, and Squovit for rank one. Moving up to rank six, we have Frillish and Carbink. I like this a lot because Carbink is coming an up and comer in the meta and it being available in the lower ranks makes it easier for the lower ranks to help acquire meta Pokemon that help them level up. Then for rank 11, we have Marowak, Alolan Marowak, Lickitung, Phantom, and Marini. Then for rank 16, we have Vullaby, Wooloo, and the legendary Phalanx. Then for rank 20, it is whatever active raid boss is in 5-star raids at the time. Then for Ace, we have Gumi, Veteran, Dino, and Expert, jagmo O. If you're lucky, Pokemon mentioned above, that could be shiny. Could be shiny, if that makes any sense. <laughs> then, as per usual, we have a timed research pass. And it is always free. Every season, you are granted it. It is the 500 wins in Go Battle League, five pages of 100 wins. I know it's sometimes it's tough to win in Go Battle League, but it's free and always available. And we have an Elite Fast TM at 400 wins, an Elite Charge TM at 500 wins. Then we have the... Then we have the Avatar items rewarded after achieving each rank. For Ace, we get the shoes. Then at Veteran, we will receive the pants. Expert rank, we receive the shirt. And at Legend rank, we get the pose. So to me, this is kind of bland. The sandals and the shirt. So this is kind of bland to me. The sandals and the pants are ones that you could just find in the shop anywhere. If anything's interesting, it's maybe the kimono looking thing. The shirt. And the pose is kind of whatever. I know it's just kind of like a Taekwondo kind of thing, but I'm not too worried about it. Not too. Not up my alley, but. Not up my alley, so I'm not too worried. So for the. Then we just quickly have our seasonal rotations by completing our research breakthroughs. Hisuian Sneasel, Furfrau, Gumi, Sandy Gas, Jagmo O, and Dubwool. And again, Sneasel, Furfru, and Gumi could be shiny. And we have different Pokemon appearing in the wild for each of these regions that appear. So for cities, we have Togek, Togetic, Gardevoir, Delcaddy, Gulpin, Stunky, Purloin, and Scraggy. From this list, I would say probably go for the go for the Togetics. Could always use more Togekiss candy. He's we all know that he's great in every league. Same thing with the Gardevoir, and you're also gonna want to pineapple these because for the Gardevoir, it is ten candy if you catch it. So getting all of those Ralts candy for Gardevoir in every league, I strongly recommend using pineapps for that. And then the other one's probably Stunky or Scraggy because we know Scrafty is good for Great and Ultra and Little Cup sometimes if they have those available. And Stunky for Gun Tank in Great League or Ultra. So all of those could be shiny except for the Delcaddy. In Forests, we have Jumpluff, Absol, Elgayam, Phantom, oh... Of course we do. There we go. Dupiter, Fomantis, and Palmy. So from this list, I would probably say maybe like Jumpluff for Great League. He's pretty bulky. Plus he has Acrobatics. So might want to get one of those. 
Phantom, we could always use a Trevenant for Great or Ultra League. Dupiter, again, Araquanid is pretty good for Great League. And that's probably it from this list. Then for the mountains, we have Macargo, Fampi, Nosepass, Metacham, Duskull, Carbink, and Noibat. Again, so these all could be wild. From that list, I would say Macargo can be decent in niche cups. Nose pass for those Great League Pro Bowl passes. Metachams, obviously always a good pick. And Carbinks, especially now that they're in the wild. They are not raid or egg locked. They're not egg locked anymore or research locked. So they now have wild IVs. So now they have wild IVs. So we're able to get a better one out in the wild. Then we have beaches and water. We have Quagsire, Shuckle, Surskit, Clamperl, Inky, Clauncher, and Tadbulb. So for this is probably get those Inkies. They're not as common. Malamar is an okay Pokemon for niche cups and for tournaments. And Shuckle for Great League. And Quagsire is always a good bet for Great League. Or maybe even spice it up in the Ultra League. Then for the Northern Hemisphere, we have the Hisuian Growlithe, Mawile, Bagon, Snivy, Tepig, Oshwat, and Litleo. I would say probably for this one, the Mawiles that are uncommon. And again, if they're in the wild, now we can acquire a wild IV one. Now they're not raid or egg locked, so we can go for an IV with a lower attack. And superior as he is a decent frenzy planter. Then for the Southern Hemisphere, we have access to Hisuian, Voltorb, Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Totodile, which for Alligator is getting a buff with Shadow Claw, Skarmory, Larvitar, and Electrike. So probably from this list, Cyndaquil as Typhlosion is a pretty decent blast burner, getting to the insanely quick with Incinerates, Totodile, and Skarmory, maybe even some Larvitar, Larvitar for uh, Tyranitar for master league and the following pokemon will hatch from eggs this season from 2k eggs we get togepi gothita solosis larvesta and fletchling so i know you can't control what pokemon come out of the eggs but if you hatch more 2k eggs then you have a higher chance of hatching a larvesta now probably the eggs have a cp limit of what they hatch from but then if you walk a smaller egg then you hatch more of them so kind of two sides to that one. For 5k eggs, we have a better selection. We have Lickitung, Sableye, Rog and Rolla, Larvesta again. I like this that they're putting it in all the eggs so that we have more access to a less common Pokemon. And Scrap. So other than that, if you have Rog and Rolla, you have a 4 and 5 chance that it is something else other than that. So that's probably that's pretty good there. For the 7k eggs, we have Alolan Vulpix, Galarian Slowpoke, Galarian Farfetch'd, Paldean Wooper, and Galarian Stunfisk. Another solid selection of Pokemon for the eggs. So the eggs are looking pretty good so far. And for the 10ks, we have Larvesta again, Gumi, Turtonator, Charconet, as mentioned earlier, and Frigibax. That's another good one that's not very common. And Arctobax can be good in every league as well. Then we have Adventure Sync Rewards, same kind of thing, any kind of dragon basically for that one. If you're lucky enough, you could also encounter Shinies. And for the seasonal bonuses, don't forget to go into a party while raiding with friends because it does increase your damage. If you have a Mega and are in a party, it could help probably maybe even duo or trio some really tough legendary Pokemon. We do get one additional free raid pass per day by spinning the discs and increase XP for defeating one star to three star raids, including the shadow raids. So lots to look forward to in the world of waters. I mean wonders. Nothing too meta shaking, but new is always exciting. I just found it funny that Heatran and Landorus get moves, but then all their counters like Palkia get a buff. So the jungle and the premier cups are what I'm looking forward to. Leave a comment and tell me what you guys think. What are you looking forward to in the season and what cups and leagues you will be playing in? If you enjoyed the video, then like, subscribe, and turn notifications on. It really helps me out. 
keeps me in the algorithm and lets you know when I post, and there will be much more Pokemon Go content to come. So thank you again so much for watching. I've been Arbor Andy, and I'll see you buds in the next one. So Jungle and Premier Cups are what I'm looking forward to. Let me know what you guys think and what leagues you'll be playing in. If you guys enjoyed the video, then if you guys enjoyed the video, then like, comment and If you guys enjoyed the If you enjoyed If you enjoyed the video, then like, comment mm. If you enjoyed the video, then like. If you enjoyed the video, ah, uh, ah. Uh.